the Choose 80 Zoom room, Doris. Um, Thank could, you for having me. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. We couldn't wait another minute for you to join us. Sorry, we couldn't love resist it. that. <laughs> Can't Can't resist resist that. Love it. <laughs> We'd like to talk yeah. to you first about the, one of the latest projects you've been involved in, which is the Rediscovered album. Um, yeah, so that's yep, basically yeah. 80s artists singing a song of their choice from any era. So you've chosen yeah. um, Put Your Records On by Corinne Bailey Ray, and it's a fantastic mm. cover. Um, what made <laughs> you choose that? Um, I love her music. I really do. And I remember when I first saw the video, her on the bicycle, just in the meadow or the woods, wherever she is. And it was like summertime and oh. just her voice. And she has that kind of throwback vocal, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, to yeah. hear gone by. And I just love the whole melody. Melody attracts me. That's the first thing that attracts me in a song is melody. So that kind of had me hooked. Yeah. It really suits your voice. It's, it's got, oh, I mean, Bailey yeah. Ray, she actually heard it. She no, heard it. no, I actually tagged her. So hopefully she'll have time. I know that's oh. a very busy lady. So, oh, I hope yeah. she does. I mean, it's a fantastic yeah. idea. The album's oh. great. How did you get involved yeah, in the project? Yeah. Um, that I was actually referred to Mara through uh, Rob Davis. You know Rob Davis from the band yeah. Mud back in the seventies. Yeah. Oh yes. yeah, worked with Kylie on the carpet, like my yeah. head and Kathy Dennis. Yes. So yeah. yeah, so Rob introduced me to Maro and I got a phone call from him. He told me about the project. Would I love to be involved? And I was like, Are you sure you got the right sister? <laughs> 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 no one ever asked me. So oh. I was like. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. I'd, I'd love to be a part of the project. And that's how I got introduced to it all. Uh, so, so if you yeah. had to choose an 80s song to do a cover of, rather than one from any decade, which song would you choose? See, I love Shalimar. Oh, oh love yes. Shalimar, yeah. 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 So it would be okay. the, um, oh, gosh. Any any song from Shalimar, I would choose. We, we also thought, Doris, that you'd choose a, a Michael Jackson song because that we know you were no, a fan. No, you can't touch yeah. Michael. If, uh -huh. you're gonna, if you're not going to do it as well as Michael. Because <laughs> you actually met Michael Jackson, didn't you, Doris? I did, I did. I met... Can like, you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, it was so wonderful. I was shocked when I got, um, like, the invite. The record company were like, well, we know you love him. Um, I think we were with Epic at the time. So they flew me out to Sweden anyway with my dad and my wardrobe lady in security. So we all went. And backstage, yeah. we had to get there via boat. Oh, wow. Um, to see him. There were people there. He had his photographer. He had uh, Frank DeLeo was his manager at the time. So, um, yeah, my dad was like, oh, look over there, Mars. Look, Michael's peeking through the curtains at you. And I was <laughs> like, oh, my God, I'm so nervous. I changed outfits like three or four times. And um, so, yeah, we got there, got in to meet Michael. And I was, oh, my God, I was so taken aback. I was so shy. What did you say? I, oh. <laughs> oh, silly. I looked at him. He said, he said to me, you're so pretty. And I said, I thought you were taller. <laughs> That's that like down. Dirty Dancing, where she says, I carried a watermelon. It's like one of those no. lines. He... <laughs> yeah, absolutely just nonsensical. <laughs> I, I guess I was in shock because I finally got to meet him. But he was just such a loving, lovely presence to be around. Oh, was that the only time you met him? Yeah, yeah, that was the one time. And yeah. it was like dream come true because I've always wanted to meet him since I was a girl, had, you know, his posters on my wall. And yeah, it was yeah. like, yeah, like I said, it was a dream come true. And yeah, he did not disappoint. No, so during that time, <laughs> did you did you meet any of the other Jacksons or any other musical heroes? Um. Mm, who did I meet? I bumped into Dinah Ross once. Um, musical wow. heroes, Dionne Warwick, Johnny Mathis. Um, there was loads of people we bumped into, and that was like in passing. 
That's amazing. Because we were working, yeah. like traveling, going from one studio to the next. You just, you know, Boy George, um, Morrissey from the Smiths. Yeah. Loads of people, loads of people. For you, what was your favorite five star song to perform? And um, <clears throat> you know what? I love when we do, or when we did live festivals, because having yeah. a live band is like, next to nothing you know it's fine going on tv and doing your performance and everything it really is it's a they're two different experiences yeah yeah, yeah. A live performance and studio on tv so um my favorite one of my favorite performances was at the royal albert hall i think it was that one of the palladium when we performed for the queen and we did somewhere somebody oh god um, oh, yeah brilliant. that must have been, been amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's one of the least shown performances online, but it was like one of the most memorable for me because I absolutely loved that song and the production. And then meeting the Queen after, it was like highlights galore. Oh. <laughs> Did she say anything to you, Doris? Yeah, she just said, oh, you must be very hot in those costumes. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, yeah. We're just kids <laughs> on yeah, stages. Yeah. We wore this sequined, I think it was sequined, aqua greeny blue dress. It was so pretty because she has like the prettiest blue eyes as well. Wow, oh, amazing. Great memories. Yeah, so yeah. so your costumes and your choreography with, with the, the big thing of Five Star, and we know that yeah. you choreographed all the routines yeah. and that you did that in your bedrooms. Um start with yeah in Romford Essex where yeah. it all started from so, home wow. <laughs> wow was it was it effortless or was it what was it really like in rehearsals was it hard getting your brothers and sisters into shape um no because if you think about it Del was 12 and only interested in football Stead was <laughs> just in and out of college at 18 19 and the other three girls in between age so it was all so new and exciting. You know, we didn't have a choreographer or a project manager. It was, you know, just from our own minds, what we'd seen on TV and the acts that we loved. And it was like, oh, well, they do this. And, you know, my dad was like, well, you know, if you all want to be entertaining, you can't just stand there and sing. He says, do some moves or something. And it was like, oh, what should we do? And I was like, well, why don't we do this? And why don't we do this with our hands? And, and everyone was like, well, you know, none of us are choreographers. Stead was at college, actually. He was at Lane Theatre. Yeah. But still, it was like Stead was learning ballet and all the technical, yeah. you know, like yeah. jazz and modern. And this was pop. Yeah. So well, it's a it was like... That from the bedroom because you actually set the, the the tone for dance sequence moves you know with groups after ever after really I mean you were oh, the one that's really a set the bar yeah. that's a lovely compliment because we all, we were always inspired by the American acts because no one here was really doing that so yeah. we just thought yeah let's do it and if we're going to do it let's do it at the best of our ability so I took the lead on that uh, Stead took the lead on the costume design, Lorraine with the interviews, Denise with the uh, vocal production, and then Dell got into production as the years went by. Yeah. So everybody kind of mm. like um, just slotted into their roles. How did you rein everyone together and get that discipline that was needed, you know, to do all that? Um, you know what? I think because I was always into team sports at school and yeah. I was always on the winning team and it was like, you kind of see what it takes and it takes a, a great team to knit together to yeah. be able to, you know, have that yeah. great game, that great performance. And I think me being a part of that helped me. Also, my dad was a musician. So the music side and the discipline of just family life, really, it all yeah. just, yeah. you know, rolled into one and everything just came naturally. It was a natural flow. How did your yeah. friends, because you've all been so young, Boris, um, your friends at school, what was it like for them to go to school with very famous classmates? Well, the only one that was in school was Del at the time. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Because back okay. then, we left school at around 15. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 15, no, oh, yeah, 16. So, yeah, yeah, Del, Del um, was still at school, and he was just into football. But friends loved it. 
yeah. friends were oh, like oh yeah. you know oh that's really cool what you're doing you know you're gonna be famous <laughs> no we like we don't know but you know yeah. it's really cool being in a studio and then I remember the very first time that we did our first video hide and seek we didn't actually own a video machine like a VHS yeah. or a beta yeah. machine so we ran next door to our neighbors who had a machine <laughs> and put the video in and it was like just seeing yourself on tv on a video for the first time was so exciting and for the neighbors to see it as well and then word spread oh they're going to be a pop group so oh, yeah no. great really exciting, really exciting times. times yeah yeah, definitely. yeah. What, what was the first tv show you appeared on that was pebble mill at one huh? in the afternoon oh, yes. Uh, were you nervous? Was, yeah, we were. We were, but it it was more like because people hadn't. If you hadn't seen us on the PA circuit, like a couple of years previously, um, you wouldn't know. You would just think we were an overnight success, but yeah. we weren't. We've been doing PAs for you know not a not a long period of time, but enough to feel confident about performing in front yeah. of others. But TV is a different thing because, you know, when you're told by the floor manager, oh, when the camera's here and you see the red light, you know, you know, play into yeah, that camera. Yeah. It's like, oh, wow, that, that's <laughs> kind of daunting, you know, your first time on TV. Yeah. But we pulled it off and we enjoyed it. And it was like, oh, God, we can't wait to do another one. So, yeah, that's oh. kind of how we got onto TV was by an act cancelling. I think it was a a group or a band, I can't remember, but they cancelled and they knew we'd been on the circuit doing PAs. Yeah. So called my yeah. dad at Tent Records and um, yeah, we got the phone call. Uh, can you guys make it up the show? We'd love to have you on. We were like, of course. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant. What so, was your first Top of the Pops like? Oh, that, that was nerve wracking. That was really yeah. nerve wracking because Top of the Pops is like the it show. Yeah, to yeah. Be on. you know you've got all the internationals flying in to do that show so yeah that was yeah. another one that was like oh my goodness we're on top of the pops but like I said you know we had a taste of Pebble Mill and doing the PA so it was like yeah we're on our journey now so yeah. it was so cool oh so yeah. so when yeah. you did make it really big we all saw the documentary of your lovely house and all the wonderful cars you had what was it like to experience that with your brothers and sisters? Because it's different when you're in a band with friends, but to yeah. experience that with your family, it must have been incredible. Yeah. yeah, it was It was all part of our working life because, you know, we weren't like, oh, we're pop stars. Um, it was our job and we enjoyed our work. And But it was a fantastic time to be enjoying that and being that young and you know but yeah. I, I think I think being such a humble family and you know it was like we just took it all in our stride yeah. mm -hmm. it sounds and, like you and plus, oh. and plus you know my dad the way we grew up it was like it wasn't all for us we used to like um invite fans in at the weekend at the gates my dad used to be like yeah come and sit in the car you know take pictures and so yeah. you know we shared the success if you like in a way um, in 1987 you won the brit award didn't you for best british yeah. group yes um, we did and, and you were the you made history really by being the first black group to win the brit yeah. award that's so cool of you to bring that up because Somebody, somebody on my Instagram said, this is a major point that nobody ever brings up, Doris, and it needs to be recognised because this is a huge deal, especially for us, you know, a lot of cultured families. It was like, wow, they can do it, so can we, you know? So that's a, a very yeah. important fact to be recognised, and I'm so proud of that, you know? I just go along, guys, with, okay, another disc, another accolade another award and it's like because it's a job and because it's my work and I love it just keep focus and the blinders are on and you just keep going straight ahead but it's wonderful on reflection and it's so good to hear I'm, I'm so yeah. proud what, what were your memories of that night the Brits because it must have been such a special night for you <laughs> Such a blur. <laughs> I'm the worst one to ask about memories, guys. Honestly, um, uh, what I remember it was like, 
oh my god it was it was so as you see Lorraine when she's like oh you know because it's like we won you know (laughs) and so many people were happy other artists were happy that we won and and um to check that photo of the bangles and Paul Simon and Pet Shop Boys and Die Straits and just all of us in that picture wow. together like mm. wow yeah gosh yeah what a lineup <laughs> I, exactly yeah um, we saw an interview Doris where you said you don't know why your record company didn't promote you so much in in the states um do you, do you know why that may have been? You did have sort of success in the dance and R and B charts over there, yeah. but not much in the mainstream Billboard charts. Um, yeah. Reason for that, or was that just the way things panned out? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got a clue, but we were just geared up to work, and it was just one of those hit and miss things. Really, it it should have been a lot more interest in us touring and just because America's so vast and we had a fan mm. base yeah I so bet. you know it, even on my Instagram today they're like oh we missed out on you guys we don't know how but you're in the states yeah. for a while so I put that all down to the business side and the, and the record company side of things I yeah. think you know yeah. five styles a global act mm. so very international so I think more should have been done and could have been done with us at, at that time, you know, at the peak of yeah. our career. And unfortunately, wasn't. So if we can fast forward to 2012, um, yeah. you reunited with four of you, reunited for a, a series of festivals. You played the Rewind Festival. We saw you there. Um, oh, that's that was brilliant. incredible. Um, yeah, that's so much fun. <laughs> and at, at the moment, um, you're not performing together. Do you think that would ever happen? Your fans would absolutely love it. Oh, they would. I'm being poked and badgered all the time oh, about it. And like, ask the other. <laughs> you know, we'll ask them. Um, I am. I am always game for a reunion. Um, there have been several attempts by us five. You know, it just hasn't gelled. So I think, you know, it's one of those things, guys, when the stars are aligned, you know, I'm very cosmic and universal about these things. And it's like, you know, um, there are so many people out there that would love to see us five back together, you know, and I can't say any more than never say never. And if it happens, it does, because like I said, you know, there have been several attempts and no cigar so far oh, we hope so well, we, we hope we wait for that <laughs> consultation to join, oh, to join. thank you <laughs> i'm going back to the present day you yes. had a single out lover's prayer with alex asher daniel yeah. and, we were and that's a great such a great song we could imagine it in a film soundtrack um, oh did- definitely yeah definitely yeah. so 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 true so that's another like avenue and angle for us to go with um alex is actually coming out end of april this april 2022 right. and um we're doing another single oh. and that's oh, so really? true guys i feel the same about the way alex produces because he's also an artist like a painter Oh, and he's nice. a DJ and you know he yeah. has exhibitions of his work and that lover's prayer has actually been an installation song for his artwork as well oh, so, so yeah that. so so the song lends itself very much to other avenues not just a chart position but for movies and like the art installation and you know I I think Alex is very very talented I call him genius he's yeah. nickname because, <laughs> well I have a project um that's personal to me it's an EP I hopefully gets released this year guys it's to do with lovers rock reggae music oh, oh brilliant yeah oh. I've got that EP coming out at some point <laughs> so that oh, EP that EP you're doing is that with your cousin Lady Margaret MC or is that another oh, project? No. no, it isn't actually. That's uh, my own personal thing. But Lady Marga is to date, uh, we've done a remake of Systematic. <gasps> oh, oh, brilliant! We've done a remake. <laughs> she is wicked. She's awesome. <laughs> she's she's styled it up to be really current, so she's kind of rapping. 
style things oh, in the yeah. verses and then I come in on the hook and then we've got Felix from Basement Jacks on it as well. Oh, oh fantastic. Oh, oh come on. It's a wicked out? mashup. It really is. And we've got Jansky, the producer. So, and the video's just been finished and edited and completed by Diego. And uh, it looks brilliant, guys. I can't wait for you guys to see it and hear it for the summer. When is that yeah. then? When's that coming out? That's going to be a June release, hopefully. Brilliant. Oh, lovely. Nice yeah. warm weather and a nice positive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the whole vibe of it is uplifting and we need that barbecue time. Oh, we do. Oh, weather. oh we do. <laughs> do. <laughs> we, we also saw a clip of you um, doing a voiceover. And for an Italian oh, yes, film, my voiceover work. Yeah, you do oh, so much. Goodness. You're a busy lady. <laughs> I am busy, and I'm enjoying every minute of it. You know, we had that whole stint of lockdown, and oh, but yeah. throughout that period, I was still being creative, and that's actually how I got introduced to my cousin by lockdown. She oh. was like, "I'm your cousin," and you know, should we do something? And I was like, "Yeah, sure," and she actually sent me the track. And with her on it, I was like, awesome. So I got on with that. But the the um, the voiceover work is something I've always wanted to do. And a friend of mine, Sarah, she actually introduced me to the Dub Juniors company with Kelly. And, and it was like, oh, I just enjoyed the whole process, guys. Honestly, it's, it's something that suits my personality and you have to get into the character so I did the action pack animation I did a little bit in the uh, invisible thread the Italian movie they're both streaming on Netflix and then I did uh, oh. Ada Twist Scientist was which is the Obama animation for children oh, as well yeah. oh, so fantastic. I'm enjoying it I love yeah. that that's, that's an exciting avenue then Doris for you yeah, yeah, all Absolutely. under the umbrella of entertainment. Finally, I mean, it's 36 years since Silk and Steel, the LP, hit the top of the charts. And yeah, looking back yeah. over all those decades and yeah. uh, all the highs and lows. And is there any motto of life that you can share with fans? Any sort of pearls of wisdom, you know, from those decades that you've, you've, uh, you can. <laughs> I, I totally, guys, I totally always thanking the fans for their support first and foremost because you know we but you know it's an old school thing to to build your fan base today it's very you know instant how you can just you know get likes and views and stuff so for all that hard work and all that support people physically coming out to see you and buying tickets you know it, yeah. it's such a a wonderful experience that I hope we never lose in the music industry you know some things need to be turned back the hands of clock need to be turned back you know with yeah. some things in music yeah. today and Definitely. um so I mean the journey's been brilliant and it wouldn't been it wouldn't have been so exciting without the fans and you know they made it special and they still make it special today we've still got a following so that's yeah. that's the most awesome thing I can say about our career over the years to date are the people that support us. Just a shout out to them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's that whole community, isn't it, behind you? That's Absolutely, absolutely. And and to know that you touch people's lives and, you know, the music um, stands for this, when they got married, when they had their children. And, you know, yeah. I, I, I love it. I love the memories and, and I love that they share that, you know, with us. Special. That's it. Well, they are the soundtrack to our lives, you know. When I look back, you know, the old cassettes in the car reminds yeah. me of Five Star coming on and everyone yeah. singing along, you know, in your first <laughs> car. <laughs> Such oh, great memories. I love it. I love oh. it. Thank you so much, Doris. We really oh. appreciate you talking to us. My pleasure, guys. I'm, I'm so happy we finally got to do this. Catch up with you, hopefully, on the road soon, anyway. Yeah, I'd love to.